Welcome to How They Got Hacked, episode two, with microphones. With microphones, featuring microphones. Featuring microphones. We heard you. Welcome. Now you can hear us. Now you can hear us back. <laughs> and uh, Tom Lawrence. Xavier Johnson. Maurice Nash. All right. So we are here to talk about how they got hacked. Uh, we're still figuring out how we're going to do the show format, uh, but we'll jump into it. Our plan is to cover some security topics, talk a little bit about them uh, in recent security news, because our goal is to keep this episode weekly. We didn't mention it last time, I realized, after re-listening to it. We didn't. See, plus, when's the next one? And I'm like, well, I think it was Friday, but someone had to move, and you know things happen. <laughs> <laughs> so we moved it to Sunday, but we're going to try to keep at least a weekly episode out there. Yeah, yep. uh, we've been lining up some guests as soon as Tom figures out the technical challenges of doing remote people. Uh, that's something we don't do very often, not in this type of setting. So, uh, I w And I want to do it right, so make sure that they, they have good audio, too, because we don't want to go, hey, yes. that remote session, couldn't hear the other guy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're doing some testing with that so we can get some guests on. Um, but let's just jump into some of the security stuff. So we we dropped we just before the show we were you know because it didn't it kind of just came together and then we said hey did you see Six Tricks got hacked and it all happened the same day we didn't have a lot of information and we still don't have a whole lot but there's some speculation and apparently Citrix was pwned for perhaps much much longer than there uh, than the FBI knows about. Uh, so the history is Citrix gets hacked apparently I think it was six and a half does it terabytes was actual change some. Massive. Large number, large number of data. They're, they're claiming six to ten terabytes. Yeah, that's so a that's a data. that's a lot to fly out of your data center uh, without someone going, "Hey, hey, hey there, there's a <laughs> there's a lot of data going by. You backing something up? You know, someone should ask the question." Right. Citrix also sells a a, a SIM tool, by the way. Okay. Um, yeah, someone pointed that out that they have some security tools. Whoops. Good news is <laughs> Citrix is not using their own internal security team. <laughs> which is good. But uh, the speculation, so there's a company called uh, R Security. Uh, they they made some bold claims, but I don't know if they're, how exactly they're backing up. There's a back and forth of whether or not these people are just trying to get themselves in the news and get noticed and get their names said uh, by making the claim that they claim, they told Citrix in December that they mm. were honed. Mm. That, and then Citrix denied it. Then Citrix, there's another person that says they're going to make an announcement about that. So we're still speculating a lot about it. But um, it's just very interesting because even a company the size of Citrix, trust me, they, they I, I don't think that they're inept. You know what right. I mean? I think they do care about security. They right. do have a knock team. They do have a security team. Right. Um, they think that they had been in there that long. But here's my speculation. And what do you guys think? When the FBI calls you and says that credential stuffing was used, wait a minute here. How does the FBI know that Citrix was pwned at all? How does FBI know? Unless, mm. because Citrix is a government contractor, and the FBI found their data somewhere that shouldn't have been. Mm. Or someone made a call, say, we got this data. And the FBI investigates and says, Citrix is the person who holds on to those contracts that you seem to have information on that you shouldn't. That's a speculation I have not seen, but what do you guys think? Isn't that usually why the FBI calls? I would say any time that the FBI calls, it's because they've just investigated something, right? And I'll just leave it at that level. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow, some way, they want to inform you of your involvement, right? So, uh, yes, it seems as if part of that ten, uh, <laughs> that six to ten terabyte data dump had at least some amount of uh, personal data to someone that either A, was being investigated by the FBI, because hey, the FBI could be leveraging this data, they may have their channels to be able to get a hold of this data, and just feel like it's a courtesy to let you know Citrix know, hey, you may have somebody bad in there. Um, or B, it could be FBI data that did get exfiled. What do you think, Mo? Well, the article says that uh, the data that they stole was focused primarily on the aerospace industry, uh, the FBI, NASA, and Saudi Arabia state-owned oil company. And that's from Engadget? Yes. There you go. So there's a lot of speculation here, but I'm just throwing it out there that when the FBI calls like this, so there's some validity to it. And it's the challenge of, are you pwned? Uh, watching the knock, even the company my size, which is small, mm -hmm. we, we were looking at some data streams before I got here. I, I'm, you know, suspicious of everything and verifying, but boy, when you talk about the scale, how many endpoints, or even the job that Xavier does during the day looking at data, there's a lot going on. It's, it, it's really tough. That's a... Yes, and a lot of the vendors today mm -hmm. are taking uh, interesting angles at, um, you know, telling you if you have or have not been pwned. Um, and the data that's there is very, uh, it's massive, right? Like there's no way that one human or even a team of humans can filter through it. And so as the, the red team room, it's like, 
really, really giddy about this. Uh, but the blue teamer in me is like extremely worried and how lacking we are right now in cybersecurity and our advancements in comparative to our adversaries and how, you know, a tool like Mimikatz, which was used in the Citrix breach, is still effective. Like how, like... Yeah. Well, we do, we do we know Mimikatz was used in that one? I didn't, or was that the IBM one? Because the other one was the Starwood. Oh, oh I think, yeah. We're going to cover that next. Don't worry. That You're getting was ahead. Starwood. 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 But still, Mimikatz is working with Star in the, in the Starwoods yeah, breach, right? That's, that's, very, that's just as recent. It's yeah. just as recent. It's a, it's a serious problem. Credential stuffing. Uh, did, did, did we know how they got their hands on passwords? So this is the part where not. They sound like they reuse passwords, okay. which is just a never, ever, ever reuse passwords. Matter of fact, if you follow me on Twitter, I had a really great tweet that I don't know who wrote this application. It was a screenshot, and it got passed around on Reddit and reshared a bunch of times. Oh but it basically says, we may not have taken security very serious. Please don't use your banking password in this application. And I just think that's a great way. Every app should say that because that's mentally, every time I put a password in something, I never use not just my banking, but I just come up with a different password. Right. And I can't remember all these, so I use LastPass. Not right. sponsored or endorsed by LastPass, but <laughs> just throw it out there. Would not, like to be. <laughs> but if, yeah, if you guys want to sponsor this channel, I've done a few videos on LastPass. People are like, but then you're holding your credentials in one single password manager. Yeah, but the worst case is the Citrix breach where someone repeated the same credentials or uh, people come up with password schemas. And how many times you took at a password list and seen a schema and go, hey, wait. They, they call their, their password is password with a capital FB. That must be for their Facebook one. So it, their Google one is probably just a G-O and so on and so forth. People think they come up with clever. Look, humans aren't designed to come up with high entropy passwords. <laughs> and as a social engineer, <laughs> I deal with that a lot. Weak passwords, actually in the Citrus attack, uh, the early attacks were from weak passwords that the attackers guessed. Yeah. And it guessed or took some of the have I been pwned password database list. And that has made, they refer to it as rainbow tables. That has made attacking so much easier. I just take these password dumps that you can find. You can download the entire torrents of these databases with tons of passwords in there. And you just try them. And the first hundred often yield a lot of great information. <laughs> or if you're like me and you don't want to ever have your IP address associated in time with any uh, you know visitation of said website, you just go to <laughs> Vegas the second week of August to yeah. DEF CON, and you take a few uh, you know take a few terabytes, and they'll actually just give you password lists. Bring lots of flash drives when you go there. Yes, uh, <laughs> you get lots of stuff. The, the data duplication <laughs> village is extremely interesting. If you uh, if you ever are interested in getting your hands on data, you may never be able to get elsewhere. Yes, and not have an IP address associated with it, but. Just visiting DEF CON probably gets you on different lists. That's a whole different. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a big list, at least. Right. You're it's amongst a fun, friends. It's a fun list. It's a fun right? list. You're amongst a lot of friends. <laughs> but related back to the uh, mini cats in that. So this is this is where that gets interesting. This is the Starwood Hotel testimony. And by the way, we'll leave show notes uh, below for everything we're talking about here. And normally reading transcripts of government testimony sounds like an arduously boring process. <sighs> but... I'll, I'll save you the, the whole read and cover the highlights. So Accenture, which managed guest reservation database connect in, uh, that contacted Marriott's IT team with information about Guardium alerted on September 7th. Now, I had not heard of the Guardium tool. Uh, apparently, it's a cool, neat, interesting AI system, essentially, uh, by IBM. So it watches databases and watches for exfiltration. And we were actually kind of impressed by this because I didn't know this tool existed. And boy, this is a neat tool if you're a company and running a large database. Guardian kind of creates a baseline and go, this is what the database on a day-to-day -day looks like. These are, you know, in the case of Starwood Hotels, these are what's your booking database. It's seen queries being hit against the database that are not the normal queries. So it out of baseline, which then alerts the person go, Let's ask questions. Why are, why are is this? And it's not, there wasn't a, a data exfiltration command. It was a query for account of table. Mm -hmm. And that's something that normally wasn't needed by the normal database interaction from day to day. And they contacted one of the developers and he says, I didn't do that. Well, that's at that point is when the world came unraveled. So this actually offers a couple of pieces of insight. One, Starwood must care about security because they purchased a uh, device. This is also why it's so scary when you purchase one of those devices because have I been pwned? I don't think so. Oh boy, this device is going <laughs> to... Plug <laughs> this, it in. 
Yeah. So these are some of those things. This is the same problem with running a knock team and stuff like that um, is trying to just establish a baseline and look for those anomalies that pop mm -hmm. up and try to find them. And uh, this was really cool. So this goes to the Mimi cats. This is the next uh, part. This is under page three, section C. In early October 2018, investigations found systems evidence of malware, including Mimi cats. And please note, that's October of 2018. 18. Now, this tells me that they didn't care as much about security. So someone <laughs> someone got sold on a big expensive product to buy that notified us something, but uh, basic security hygiene would have found Mimi Cats. What do you think? Uh, I totally agree. Mimi Cats is like super low hanging fruit. Um, and describe what Mimi Cats does for and so, people. And so Mimi Cats is a tool that will examine memory and be able to pull things out of memory, such as passwords, right? Such as secrets, uh, so that you can uh, you know further leverage your attack. Um, the fact that this was happening and no one uh, saw. Uh, and not to mention that, um, you know, within an environment, uh, even if you're not moving laterally and you're using a tool and you're just connecting to one machine and you're pulling data off of that machine, that data is going over a wire. Uh, there should be some sort of, like I said, deep hack and inspection, some kind of inspection on that traffic that allows you to be able to see that it matches a signature of what could be, you know, secrets or that it's, you know, at a at a time of day that's non, uh, you know, usually that this type of activity usually doesn't happen in, right? Because you know, so mo most of the best attackers in the world <laughs> work in the uh, the CET, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that that time zone is a few hour, lots of hours ahead of even the earliest time zone in America, which is the Eastern time zone. Right, and they that's it, it goes a little step further to that's one of the ways they uh, figure out attribution when they're trying to figure out who did this to look at the time zone and go well what, who's awake at that time. Mm -hmm. Granted, that's loose attribution, Very but loose. it's Very. but it's an assumption that might be made. But the other thing too is I don't think there's an antivirus out there. Even Microsoft's antivirus should pick up Mimi Cats. I mean, it's yes. It's an old tool. It's not Windows like it's Defender. Sees <laughs> Windows <laughs> Defender, like the very minimum. Uh, and this is also where there's other tools that, and we use ourselves, Huntress Labs, um, is an EBR system. And what they do is Huntress Labs sees new startups and does a signature on them and go, hey, and it alerts us of this. This is a tool we run for our clients. Like, there's plenty of tools out there, more than the antivirus that starts looking for these things. Because Mimi Cats would have had to run in startups. So mm -hmm. why aren't you sanitizing what's in the startup on Windows? There's only so many places that the application startup could have a list. These are the type of security things that need to be looked at, like, especially when you talk about a developer who has that database level access that many Mimi Cats is able to extract the credentials from, dude, you tighten down your developer stuff. Like really, that's that, that's just good security hygiene is keeping your dev team in check. Um, they want all the privileges in the world, but you only give them least privilege on up. <laughs> Principle of least privilege. P O L P. <laughs> yes, that is uh, when your when your sysadmin is. Your dev team is uh, just as scary sometimes as the end user because just because they're developers, just because they're good at writing code, good at doing databases, does not implicitly mean they think in secure terms all the time. They're focused on writing quality code, writing mm -hmm. hopefully secure code, writing efficient code, but their personal security because they're developers. I mean, they're a strange breed of people who wants to sit in front of a computer that long. <laughs> so that <laughs> got it. <a, laughs> so true. Yeah. They want to spend 12 hours a day coding, but do they do this securely? Um, how do they do that? So it's a lot of things, especially because I, I, the ones that work from like a coffee house scare me sometimes. Oh, those are my, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The social engineer over here is going, I, I might have met a few of those. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're not thinking about someone's shoulder, just shoulder surfing a password and seeing what they're doing and things like that. Shoulder so, surfing is real. Yeah. I mean, he'll tell you. And how many times you go to these. The, it, but I, I do like, you know, we got WeWork. We got some of those places. But how much information comes out of WeWork that you could uh, walk away with out of there? I just need one invoice. I just need one invoice and maybe an iCal just so that I know when you're out of office so I can do what I need to do to scare you, if you get what I mean, allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Just beware of the guy that keeps getting up coffee. Yeah. Just beware of the guy that's outside with the sign that says, we'll work for food, because he may have an RFID cloner on him. Yeah, that too. So be aware of every <laughs> single person you meet. <laughs> well, and this goes down to, and it, you know, like I said, we don't have this. These are the little pieces of information that I think were, would have been more important to testimony. It doesn't say, you know, obviously we know it was a DevOps person that Mimi Cats was able to mimic, um, but were they a work from home? 
where, where are some of those details? And those are ones we want to do. Uh, we want to get more information on some of that uh, to cover it because that's going to be a very interesting because this is how they could have prevented it because it comes down to some of the most basic. One, they have a basic tool on there. Two, mm -hmm. this is some basic stuff here. If someone was able to get a hold of the laptop while he was at Starbucks waiting on someone to call his name wrong because he left his laptop open, they all they have to do is follow the guy around, find out what he works for, pop in a USB real quick while he's getting his uh, coffee, and he's got Mimi Cats. You guys lost an entire database with a, an untold number of names because one person gets a coffee. Some of these hacks are that simple. This is a little bit speculative, but it's one of those reasons it's so critical uh, to keep on your dev team and make sure that they're following security practices and you lock down their laptops. Right. Yeah. And endpoint hardening, hardening and endpoint protection is extremely hard, right? And so a lot of organizations, especially small to medium organizations, they're focused on their product. Uh, they're moving in agile. There's no more waterfall, right? So people are trying to move fast. Product developers are pushing for new features. Um, you know, so so you you have this entire uh, this this quality versus quantity issue where you know you can knock out a bunch of features, but how quality are those features? Have they been tested? When's the last time they've been tested? Um, you know, what are some of the hygienic processes around development, right? So uh, rotating your secrets. That doesn't mean just passwords. I'm talking about secrets. Sometimes certificates need to be changed, like right? Like every, every year, at least, bare minimum, you should be changing your certificates, certain types of certificates. I'm sure somebody will meet me in the comment box and correct <laughs> me, and I will learn from you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, th that's, start, that's starting to become more of a, a hard uh, thing to tackle because people are moving away from traditional IT. Right, yeah. you're starting to see more and more MacBooks inside of the uh, the the corporate environment now, and less and mm -hmm. less PCs. And you're starting to see more and more remote people, where you know they're connected to the VPN from home. The VPN is now you know de designed by some guy who you know maybe worked at another company and has made it flat. And so now they can hop from every network to network, or every office to office, just on one network. Um, and you you'll be amazed at some of the stuff that I've seen. Just, just from being in this industry, right? Being able to see uh, the printer in a completely different country. Yeah, I have no use oh. for this printer in another country. Why, why am I able to route to it? And why is the <laughs> panel open for me to log yes. in? And why is it pa Network. admin password? Network <laughs> segmentation. Yeah, that is so important. So before we like spiral into crazy on that, but this is uh, part of it's leading into the security hygiene of those external people is leading into the story I want to share. So it's tax season. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're going to share a story of an accounting firm that was attacked. Now, how they were attacked is really interesting. Good, solid security on the inner office and things like that. So, But one small mistake was made. They had an employee who didn't uh, work in the building no more. They worked externally. And the owner of the company said, yeah, you can work externally. This is fine. And it was. They even got them a laptop dedicated to working externally mm -hmm. because they didn't want them using their own laptop. Downside is their choice of connection, you know, just RDP. So there's the first problem. Uh, no VPN on top of it, just RDP. But good password, so they didn't get in. Well, the person got their personal laptop infected and they were goofing around on Yahoo Mail and things like that. And then they got their laptop that was given them for work infected, but didn't know it. But this is where the small businesses think they, they're immune to it. And this is where things really go crazy. So they're using commercial paid for licensed tax software, not something you can even download a demo for, like you gotta buy it. It's uh, made by Thomson Reuters. This is a commercial enterprise tax product. This is not your, you know, something you bought off the shelf. They're the medium sized company will say, they a dozen employees working there. Um, the person took that remote access information was on their computer and sat there for a while. We're really unclear because they did log wiping to figure out when it got in. Now let's go a little further what they did with this. They went back and forth and it turned out that the admin uh, privileges were given to this remote user. Why? Because they used to help manage things internally so they had the admin privileges. Now the difference between the admin and users, and actually not a lot, they all have access to account information, but the admin privileges adds the ability to export the database with about 4,000 customers in there. Now the reason I bring up one, security hygiene, because this person did not uh, practice any type of security hygiene and was ignoring every pop-up error because they didn't want to tell their boss they were goofing off on the <laughs> laptop work provided. So one, the fear of losing their job caused them to be further insecure and just keep closing the pop-ups, but needed to get work done, so kept logging in. 
someone was able to copy those credentials. They use those credentials to log in. They use those admin credentials that they typed in. They exported the database, the back to being commercial software. The person had access to another accounting firm. This is where it gets weird. Took that database, uploaded it to another version of this Thomson Reuters, the same version, imported all the clients in there, mm -hmm. all the tax information. Then went and proceeded to file their taxes of all these people and set the reef, change all the bank routing to be one bank so all the refunds dropped in. But let's go much further. They didn't just understand how to do this. Like you, me and you could probably figure out how to import export database. You know what I mean? I don't think any of us near now do this. They adjusted every return for the maximum benefit. And it's not easy. They, right. they did it in a way that the IRS wouldn't notice. Because obviously if I just said maximum everything, wow. the IRS will flag it going, no, no, you can't right. claim all this crap. They tweaked all the returns, individually tweaked them. So it took someone with accounting knowledge to do this. Tweaked the individual returns to get the maximum return. Wow. And then filed it. Maximum return without raising a flag in the software. The software will flag up before the IRS goes, go, no, no, you made too many claims, you made too many things. Think about that for a second. Yeah. That's the level of sophistication that went attack for the small business. And it yielded. Whew. I have so many thoughts right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I'm like, is this okay. nation state? Because this sounds nation state, right? Like, if you're in North Korea and you it need to bolster your state. economy, this yeah. is the kind of things that you engage in, right? Yeah. Yeah. It seems really, really advanced for it just to be some dude that's and, uh, trying to, you know, yeah, stuff cookies for money. affiliates well, marketing, right? Some of the other uh, deeper parts of this is as the investigation went on, um, it also turned out just talking to the people involved at uh, the security team at the uh, Thomson Reuters and things like that, that, yeah, there's th this is a common problem. They have it. They, they're like busy. They're like, yeah, this is this is Tuesday. What's new? This, wow. Which which small accounting firm are you today? That's wow. that's what even was worse. Like they, and I started talking about. Aren't you guys amazed at the sophistication? They're like, no, no, no. This is Tuesday again. This is these guys were not like jaded. Wow. <laughs> they were, like so. So there we go. That, that's actually something that I can leverage. Right. Mm -hmm. Alert fatigue. We, as cybersecurity professionals, we get alerted for every little thing. This person used sudo. This person is running a vulnerable version of this. This box is under attack. We get so many alerts that we're starting to consider some of this stuff normal. Like when you're coming yeah. onto my website and you're doing a denial of service by refreshing it, I don't even consider it a denial of service anymore. Actually, I've ar architected my solutions for you to be able to do that and not just consider that a use case. Yeah. Whereas 10 years ago, and when I was on-prem, that's a huge problem for me. You're wasting bandwidth, you're costing me money, et cetera. Um, so it, the, these huge accounting firms and the people who make the software for them are like seeing misuse and seeing this happen in the industry, and they're just like, this is just another day. It's almost like today, if your credit card got stolen, you're like, drats. It yeah. was probably, you know, somewhere. Who cares? Whatever. I'll call the credit card one. company and they'll it's, give me another one. And that's, a, that's one of the things we're going to really relate to these small businesses because they just keep thinking it won't happen to me. And I'm like, here, it's it's not just happening. When you find out, you know, that they, they provide this software primarily targeted at these smaller accounting firms and they're like, yeah, we got people calling us breach all the time. It's, it's not uncommon for them. And that's just like almost mind blowing. It's mind boggling. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it's a... Uh, it's a real threat. And that's, you know, being as taxis, I figured I'd bring this one up. It, it, it happened a while ago, but it was one of those things. Like, yeah, that's what a you, good story. Yeah. Um, and there's opportunity here, right? So, like, what are some of the things that we can learn from yeah. this, yeah. this situation? First, right? VPN. So, there you go. They should have VPN right off Definitely. the rip. That, that laptop given to them should have been locked down secure. No admin privilege from ever install software, which would have stopped any type of spying on there. Yep. Uh, would have helped eliminate phishing attack. Two-factor. Yep. Um, any accounting firm that we have, now we have a few of them uh, that RDP into things, but they use Duo. So mm -hmm. uh, Duo go. Security, which is a great two-factor authentication system. It's dead simple to use because accountants, turns out, not always tech savvy. They're great with a calculator, not great with a keyboard. So, <laughs> well, giving they, may, them, they may be good with a the keyboard. They may be good with a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, well, at least we know. We never. I don't know if they ever caught the person because hey, this is back to one of those we flip it to the FBI. This is not mm -hmm. our... This is beyond, I'll help you with the technical aspects. We'll do the cleanup. You need a lawyer. You need a breach. Uh, some of the dudes forensics on this. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's there's things that I just know because I know there's legal ramifications on here that it's one of those uh, stops. Like, it's been breached. And, and, and actually, you just said something interesting, right? We give it to the FBI. And then what does the FBI do? Sometimes the FBI has to pick up the phone and call Citrix and go, hey, yeah. by the way. By the way. 
you got breached, yep. right? So it all comes full circle. Some of these smaller companies being breached may be a direct reflection of yeah. another larger company, a vendor that they're already using, have being breached. Now, in this incident, in this incident, yeah. it, this was just this was just lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, right? right? So I have a question for you, Tom. You have a lot of uh, interesting customers. <laughs> um, <laughs> What do you do as a master service provider when your customers insist on making bad practices? Maybe they don't have in-house IT and they know enough just from working with you for a few years to be able to say, oh, I just need to use RDP (laughs) or, excuse me, uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop because it's not going to say RDP. Right, right. So um, this is actually a big challenge. And the... Your friend who gave the talk at one of our DC through and three, I love his comment on this, and it's prudent man. And now this is a legal term. Uh, Prudent man is where you reiterate to someone something horribly stupid they said would be a good way to describe it. (laughs) So they tell you, I don't plan to implement, like verbally, I I don't want to do this. I don't want to secure this. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to open up RDP to the world. Then you say, I am reiterating, because a lot of times you don't get these things in writing, but please put them in writing. Send them a letter. Uh, even have them sign it uh, is even the best way to do this. I have never gone this far as having to sign it because it usually is enough to get their attention. I've printed it. I, I'll just say, you're, check here and here that you're denying any type of security mitigation. I'm telling you that this is horrible. Did you put your initial here? And I love when they ask why. Oh, in case this goes to court ever, like after you're pwned. If you get pwned, I'm not saying you will. I'm just saying I don't want to be part of your problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is where sometimes just simple emails are enough to, and have them get a reply, uh, say, yeah, I acknowledge this. And that's what I'll even ask people in email, like you are doing something horribly wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is one of those, it's important to make sure if you're going to be part of something, I mean, I, whatever, we have clients that are doing dumb things at at this very moment and we are slow we finally it's kind of funny because people like i would run for them as a client I, I i put them at bay like i put them i've documented it i've cya um if you're in especially if you're an internal sysadmin i bet there's someone at citrix holding the get out of jail free card that someone came down in his office going hey and he's going he's going to hold up his defense going right here guys remember when i sent this remember when i sent this here i'm going to hand this to your boss right because yeah. <laughs> that, that's how this happens in these internal places there's always someone running around with a piece of paper going see <laughs> see by the way related to this in case you work on an internal team that's how i protect myself externally i have access to my email but if if you are internal systems it and you email back and forth that's wonderful you should you should also cc an external email address on some of these because what's the first thing you're going to do when they blame you for the world crashing down (laughs) and them getting pwned after you told them hey you should have updated the firewall and replaced the security certificate Real easy. They're going to disable your email. You will not have access to your get out of jail free email. Right. Um, so make sure if it's critical nature of that, you either keep a paper copy, some type of evidence, BCC your uh, email address. So there's a chain of evidence uh, to this. This is an important CYA you should always be thinking about uh, whenever this. And hell, this even goes outside of IT when you just like, boss, if you turn the knob that far, it'll probably break. Yeah. And then it's your machine and the boss turns it and it breaks, they'll still may blame you. So please tell them, don't turn the knob like that and buy a new knob over here. Right. <laughs> Those are, if we can leave you with that, of, of our wisdom we've had from working in systems engineering stuff. Yes, very much so. <laughs> and, um, you know, that was one of the first conversations I had at DEF CON when I went last year was with the Red Teamer who we have, we had a lot of different interesting conversations, but the one that really stuck to me most, most was the levels of indemnification. I didn't realize that there were levels and that even mm. if you indemnify yourself, you can still be accountable on other arenas, right? So like in other, how do I put it, areas of business in which you're still conducting, you're still allowing this bad practice to happen, you can still be responsible for it even though you know it's not a best practice and you've documented it so he he called that uh uh some some sort of levels right so um the idea is that you don't uh sign a a document that says that okay i'm going to be attacking a system 
Um, and I'm going to be using these techniques, and this is my MAC address, and this is my IP addresses that I'll come from. You know, this, this, you know that I'm doing this, right? So that if the company gets breached and they see that it, that you know, you're in the access logs around that same time of day, and then there's other IP addresses and other MAC addresses coming on premises around the same time, they can make sure that you're not colluding, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one layer. But then, what about you know the logs that you may have been removing wholeheartedly that they may have been removing too? Right. What about um, devices that you may be, um, you know, compromising that they may be coming behind you and compromising. Right. They may be following all of your footsteps that gets you to another level where you, you are sort of responsible for that. Now, simply because they are they are coming right behind you. Right. You, you, you get where I'm coming yeah. from, Tom? Yeah. yeah. So there's you have to be very careful on all of that, uh, especially when there's anything that could be a legal matter uh, document. And feel free to reach out to legal counsel. I'm not saying we're authorities on any of this. We're, we're actually recommending if you think things are too questionable, it may be worth it because I had a friend involved in some stuff um, that did reach out. He was fine, but it's, it's worthwhile uh, to to do that because this is when you start working at these higher level jobs hey great the pay is nice and things like that but you know any of these big breaches there were people who hit the chopping block um at any of these companies i don't know what i don't know the level of innocence but i i, I of course we do laugh a little bit at the equifax one because <laughs> they only had a music degree and not that i'm saying degrees or everything but there's nothing about the history of that person oh, that I made me think they were security I oriented i got lambasted on social media for laughing about the music degree <laughs> you don't even have a degree what if we laughed at you well, I would just take the joke and keep it moving. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah. So it's always worth, you know, someone's going to hit the shopping block, so make sure you're covering all that. Um, any more thoughts on the accounting firm? I think that's pretty much like we, we covered like the, I mean, it was, it's, that's a problem. I mean, the tax are kind of simple, mm -hmm. um, but they, what they could have done better, we talked about. I think that's, uh, and the same with all of these, so much of this is security hygiene, security hygiene. Don't get calls from the FBI. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that could be how you, they got hacked episode 1000, right? Um, cover your ass. Make sure that, you know, you're locking down your firewall. So let, maybe, maybe this is a good opportunity for us to give some, Free consulting, maybe, yeah. right? So, like, <laughs> when we say firewall, we don't mean just at the host level. I hope that they yeah. don't think that we're talking about the firewall that's in Windows. No. No. It's at every level. There you go. And what, what do we consider that, right? Like, depth and defense. Yes. So it's layers of it. So, like, oh, defense and depth, excuse yeah. me. Defense so, and depth. <laughs> so, so, basically, from my perspective, we need a firewall on the host. We need a firewall on that part of the land because your land should be segmented, right? Yes, absolutely. And then we need a firewall above wherever the trunk is happening and at the switching, right? So some kind of at the gateway level. Um, and some people go as far as uh, going beyond that, right? Depends on your network topology. Uh, what, what are some of the, what are some of the uh, topologies you've seen where they've introduced firewalls at different levels? Yeah, and this is where you this is where I've done a few videos on uh, building your network and a lot of the consumers start out and it's a great learning when you're doing it at home, uh, segmenting your network with things like uh, you put your IOT over here, you put the random other stuff over here, the kids are over there with their PlayStation and your network there. You know, I've done a few network segmentation videos, but that's a lot of the why is the goal is to prevent lateral movement. So if they compromise a device inside there, they don't laterally move. And that's where these companies a lot of times make mistakes. Mm -hmm. That one admin privilege because of convenience given to one person externally, the person wouldn't have had that admin privilege they can only look at every individual account. Mm -hmm. So that that's where we refer to lateral movement. How else were they able to leverage one piece of knowledge and find out what that person had? And that's where the firewall stopped them. You know, so that's that's probably where we'll leave this here. Because like I said, we could we could go in for another hour about this, but we get, we're going to make some more episodes. Yeah. So. All right, cool. cool. I'll <laughs> leave it. I'm ready for the next episode. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it. We plan some guests. And uh, we actually have a couple of gray hat topics I want to bring in too. We're trying to figure it out because we know people have done things, but we want to make sure that they cannot be in trouble but there's reasons they did them that makes sense from yeah. the standpoint um and we'll let you be the judge because we already know where the law stands on this. <laughs> but uh, we're, that's what some of the remote guests are going to be. And we're going to make sure we either just share their stories directly um, via via proxy. So it's us sharing the story. But right. We're not the ones doing the things. Right. <laughs> so uh, we'll leave you with that. And uh, we, more feedback is good. Hopefully the audio was good. We had microphones and everything. And we'll see you next time. Awesome. See you guys next week.